Utah Hockey Club. Established this year, Utah is the youngest franchise in both their division and the entire league. Too bad I can't even do, and now the former Winnipeg Jets, anymore. Well, I guess I can say the team prior started as the original incarnation of the Winnipeg Jets in 1972 in the WHA, joined the NHL in 1979 along with Edmonton, Quebec, and Hartford, and relocated to Phoenix in 1996 to become the Coyotes. This past offseason, the Arizona Coyotes moved to Salt Lake City right as they were bought by Ryan Smith, who also owns the Utah Jazz. The NHL is pulling a Cleveland Browns here, where the Coyotes' history, colors, and records will remain in Phoenix, and Utah is being designated as an expansion team for this year like the Baltimore Ravens were in 1996. The Coyotes will be deactivated in the meantime and have five years to build a new arena, or else they will cease to exist. All I can say is that Gary Bettman is trying his damn best to keep hockey in the desert alive, though I say he should have been doing background checks on owners like Alex Morello, but let's get back on track. They're going with Hockey Club for just the season because, oh, we gotta establish ourselves first and then settle on a name and logo. Never mind the fact that Colorado and Winnipeg had new uniforms, names, and logos ready to go right after they both relocated and didn't need an extra year to figure that out. The home black and road white are bland and very generic looking with just Utah across the front. Yeah, there's teams like the Rangers and Penguins who have done that before, but those looks came from different time periods where that was both accepted and were more eye-catching, and over time became timeless and classic looks. Nowadays, we're able to do more with our designs, even if it's not always taken advantage of with minimalist designs as well. It's all about context, people. Sure, the PWHL just had the cities with no names in their first season of existence, but that was an upstart league. An NHL team doesn't have this problem these days. Imagine if Vegas and Seattle didn't have names for their first seasons. That would have been awful. Tis a shame that they're not moving forward with the name Storm and Mormons. I know last year I commented how the Coyotes' Kachina jerseys being brought back gave off vibes of desperately trying to stay in Arizona, but I still like them overall and find them to be incredible. These two jerseys are the opposite and are incredibly boring. They're only appealing to new fans and collectors because they're only here for a single season. I know Ryan Smith tried to do the black and white scheme as well as adding a third color with the Jazz after he bought them, but it flopped and those jerseys are slated for replacement. Seeing him do the same here makes me pray that an awesome logo and name is on the horizon to rectify this for Utah, because these uniforms are as boring as the state itself. You know what's absolutely hilarious? While Utah doesn't have an ad patch, the Coyotes did and it was for Gila River Casino, the same casino that had their name attached to the Glendale Arena that they got kicked out of. Now that's a lot of irony. Given the fact that these are only lasting for a year and look like they were made in a minute, Utah is garbage. With an eventual new name and logo, the only way is up. That concludes the Central Division. Tomorrow we begin the Pacific Division with the Edmonton Oilers.